two parts, kind of casual, but it's important. Um, teaching obviously is going to be very different this semester for all of us. And so the questions of how to provide information literacy instruction have come up. Uh, whether Some people will be doing it in person, some people will be doing it remotely. So just wanna share with you what we're planning. Also be nice to have a little bit of feedback if anybody um, has any feedback. I know, Deborah, you're already scheduled. Your class, some of your classes are already scheduled. You're already on the calendar. And others, uh, we're sort of waiting, especially with the the English 103s, Judy um, and Peter. That's that's an yes. Issue. Yeah, um, we have we have ideas about that, and I'll share them. All right. So I'm going to share my screen first. I'm going to discuss instruction. And let me know if you can see my slide. Fall 2020 information literacy instruction. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So obviously this is going to be very different. So just to go over the instruction modalities that we're all wrestling with. Classes are on ground. And this is these are the um, definitions that are on the reopening page provided by teaching and learning. Uh, on ground is your traditional in-person format. Hybrid is your combination of on ground with remote. Uh, remote is the synchronous online meeting and online or the asynchronous not in real time classes. So every one of our classes is in one of these presumably. So those translate to three information literacy modalities. There's either a class visit to the Callahan lab, which is something we all know and have done well with, virtual sessions, which can be asynchronous or synchronous. These are online. And then something that's pre-recorded, which would be asynchronous recording or, or a tutorial. And I'm going to discuss each of these and, and which class it works best with. So we'll go with the, the known. A traditional online, a traditional class visit is for on ground uh, and or hybrid courses. Faculty teaching hybrid courses have a choice. They may do an on ground in the library session, or they may choose that their hybrid does the virtual session. There's merits to both. The merit to bringing them in is that they get to, if most of these are freshmen and new students, they get to be in the library uh, and get acculturated and accustomed to it. If you decide to do it in a hybrid, it's because you are trying to spend as much time with your students in person as possible. And they're both, they're both very acceptable. But we're, we're working with whatever you'd like. The complication for on-ground visits is that the L10 lab now has a reading capacity of 14 rather than the usual 28. And despite what I have been told, uh, that classes won't be large, there are many classes of 20 plus students uh, where faculty would like to bring them in. So this is what we're doing. Um, somebody should be, I don't know who. Um, so this is what we're doing. And faculty have so far opted for all of these. Um, bring your class on two days. Uh, someone is doing this. He sees half of his class on Tuesday, half of his class on Thursday. And the class that's not in is Zooming. So we're not asking anybody to upend and change everything for their class. So we're sticking with that. And on Tuesday, half of his class will attend a library orientation and he's doing something else with them online. On Thursday, they just flip. That involves us doing the class twice, but some of you are doing your classes twice, so that's, that's fine. The other option, this is a little creative, uh, I've annexed L11, which is the room across the hall. I requested from the registrar uh, that I get, have the room all semester. So far, they haven't needed it. Um, if not L10, uh, sorry, L11, there's also L14. A lot of our child study classes meet in there. And from what I'm seeing online, L2 and L3 are being used sparingly. So in other words, we have other places to put students if your class has over 14 students. However, they can't all search. 
and a big part of these, many of these classes is to practice using the databases. So I purchased 15 Chromebooks, 15 for each library, because we have the same problem in Brooklyn. And what will happen is that depending on the size of the class, how it works, is that someone will teach, let's just say it's me, I will teach the class in L10 and zoom it to the screen in L11, where the students will have the Chromebooks. So when we get, they'll all see the same presentation. When the time comes to search, they will have the Chromebooks. What I'd like to do in that case is have another librarian cover that last 20 to 30 minutes of the class so that someone is there to help them. Um, can't run back and forth across the hall. The other thing we can do is Zoom breakout rooms. You know, with social distancing, we're faced with um, not necessarily going over and squeezing in among the students to stand behind someone at their workstation. So we're going to practice with breakout rooms and see how that goes. Um, we know it won't be exactly the same, but we're really, really trying to replicate as close as possible so that the students are the most comfortable and you're comfortable with what we're doing with them. So this one is sort of a real time and it's for definitely for on ground classes and you may choose to do your hybrid that way. The second option would be to have a completely virtual session. Obviously the remotes will all have virtual sessions. The hybrids, this would be for the person teaching a hybrid who wants the library visit virtual. So that would be uh, options include a synchronous lecture and an interactive lab demonstration, kind of what we had said before with um, Google, not Google, Zoom breakout rooms. Um, you could also just have an asynchronous video. We will send a video to classes that we have a lot of. Uh, we have a lot of, as Judy knows, English 103s, SJC 100s, um, SJC 200s, and the thesis classes, some of the uh, Child Study 400s, uh, the Psych 460s. So those, particularly some of the uh, departments that have a large number of small thesis sections, six students at a time, um, eight students at a time, we're going to create a video that shows the basics of what we're doing and they may view that in class with the librarian. You can either do it in real time, you can assign the viewing in Canvas, but in either event you can have a scheduled follow-up with the librarian. So let's just say your class is at 8 in the morning and what will probably happen is from 8 to 8.40 there will be the lesson and then coming on at 8.30 or 8.40 will be the librarian assigned to your class. And will say, okay, everybody log on, you know, make sure you're in this browser, whatever they're doing, and the librarian will be able to do more in real time live. And the third option is you just have them watch the asynchronous video and advise them to make an appointment with the librarian if they have a question. That's how a virtual session would work. And finally, just your plain, vanilla recorded video. Please send my students a tutorial. Last year for the graduate child, last, this summer, when graduate child study thesis classes were all online, and they had traditionally not been, we recorded a whole series of tutorials for what a, a graduate thesis student would need in education. And those were sent to those students. Um, I know those faculty asked for them and someone actually just asked, could they see them again, they're still up. So we'll send you a, no matter what we do, we'll send you a recording to you. Um, we're going to push virtual appointments with the students this semester. If 75% of them, or I hear different numbers all the time, but if most students are studying virtually, um, the chat feature is nice. They can just log on and they say, you know, I'm having a problem with this or that. I see the logs some of these chats can run a half hour to an hour because they need a lot of help. I think would be better would be if they actually book an appointment 
uh, with a librarian because what happens is we only have a certain number of people covering chat at once. And if it's two people and one student takes up an hour, that's only one person for all the other virtual questions. So we know we're going to do a lot of virtual reference. We're going to try to encourage students to um, make an appointment with somebody where they know they've got that person's attention for, for an hour or so. We're going to say they're a half hour, but we will run over. Um, so we're going to do that. Uh, you'll get this. This is our instruction request form. It's not as personal as shooting someone an email. We know that, but we have a lot of classes to track in a very unusual environment. And this enables us, everything we do gets posted into a spreadsheet. Of course, we'll email people back. That's not a problem. And we can call folks. Uh, we'd love to speak with you by phone or find out what your needs are. This is our general instruction um, email address. And this is my email address. So that said, I'll open it up if anybody has a question about what I just threw at you in 10 minutes. Any questions now or, or later? <laughs> 